I just turned and then I felt someone was hitting me and grabbing me. What did he hit you with? A beer bottle. A beer bottle. Okay. And then he grabbed me and says, shut up. I was ashamed to go home even because I didn't ask for it. You didn't ask for it and no one deserves that. It's not supposed to happen in that way. So I want to know, he kept asking you. Here in South Africa, more than 2,700 women were murdered last year. That's one woman every three hours. And before the lockdown, an average of 100 rapes were reported every day. But experts say that's just a fraction of what's really going on. The recent murder of Tsekhofato Bole showed that the problem is not going away. She was eight months pregnant, found, stabbed, hanging from a tree and hundreds of people who were supposed to be under lockdown left their homes to grieve together. But we've been here before. Last year, the murder of 19-year-old Uyinen Mkhodjana led to protests across the country. She went to a post office to collect a parcel. He dragged her into the post office, raped her repeatedly until she was unconscious. Every day in this country, as a woman, we live in a, in a nightmare. As the people's anger spilled onto the streets, President Cyril Ramaphosa was forced to declare violence against women a national crisis. And the government has since given more money to special sexual crimes courts, places of safety and even training for the police. It's also gone to clinics which help survivors of sexual assault. Back in March, we filmed at one in Johannesburg to see if it's making a difference. They don't just help women, children too. We have the comfort packs, ne? Comfort packs, we give it to our patients. And this one is for adults. This is for young ones. We have toy inside. How young are some of the children that have come to the centre? Less than six. Less than six years? Yeah. The situation that we are actually encountered with as a woman is very painful because it makes you realise that it can actually happen to anyone. No one is immune. So we see um, victims from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Heels together. So there's the kit. Okay, sister's going to open it. We met a woman who was there to report a rape from the night before. We're keeping her anonymous to protect her identity. She told us she was scared that the police wouldn't believe her. We returned to the clinic to see how they are coping under the pandemic. They say the cases have increased and looking after patients is getting harder. If you have an increase in the number of uh, gender-based violence, okay, and then we've got a set number of PPE, you know, chances are we might run out if the issue keeps going at the rate it is going. And obviously problems like that are quite dangerous. And it's not just the clinics that have been affected by COVID-19. Lockdown was really horrific when it comes to domestic violence. Due to permits, no one could move around. So even if you wanted to leave your abuser, you couldn't leave because the government would stop you on the road and tell you to go back home. We saw grotesque acts of domestic violence taking place and people really having no options and no support structure that they could go to. We know that gender-based violence is a huge problem in South Africa and experts say it's rooted in outdated beliefs about women. So the government is trying to change this by also focusing on South Africa's men. The world looks at us as a destination near femicide. Society was contracted and, and, and built around patriarchy. We've got so many excuses. So let us begin to look deeper into ourselves. This workshop, led by Patrick Shai, a reformed abuser, teaches men not only to recognize harmful behavior, but also how to change it. It's part of a new program by the Justice Department. Initially, there seems to be a sense of reluctance to open up, but eventually something shifts. Uh, we are too oppressive. That is not correct. We must take this curriculum, this conversation, into our homes. By the time we go out to the streets and march, it's way too late.
change begins with you. I don't think I've ever been in a space where that's in a space that's mainly meant to be for men and they get to speak freely and openly about abuse but also about their role in the cycle of abuse in, in South Africa. And that for me feels different to what the messaging has been in South Africa all these years. And it's this combination of community work and education that activists say will break the cycle of violence. In Rustenburg, pupils are being taught about sex, violence and consent. But if any sexual activity without consent is sexual violence. We discovered that 8% of um, the violence that happens in, in, in this uh, area they had been violated before the ages of 15. So this is where we try to educate people that uh, sexual violence, it can occur to anyone. When we say yes, sexual activity is violent. Society tends to blame the victim, but I'm hopeful for the future. There is a national conversation, everyone is beginning to, to talk about it. The people we met seemed determined to help, and it was clear to see that some things are beginning to change. But managing the spread of coronavirus has meant that some of these programs have had to be put on hold, something that has advocates worried that violence will go unchecked and more lives will be lost.